Good evening and welcome to Rural America Live. I'm John Jenkinson. The current coronavirus pandemic has changed the way many of us are living our lives, including our friends at AARP. They made a special request of us here at Rural America Live to keep you informed about fraudulent activity that is taking advantage of our nation's current health care crisis. Scammers never take a break. They seem to enjoy these types of situations. For example, federal officials shut down a newly created website peddling a free vaccine for COVID-19. There is no vaccine for COVID-19. The U.S. Attorney General would like you to report suspected fraud schemes tied to COVID-19 by calling the National Center for Disaster Fraud hotline at 877-720-5721 or email disaster at leo, L-E-O, dot G-O-V. With coronavirus scams on the rise, we decided to air an encore presentation of a show we did last October on health fraud and scams. The tips we shared on the show are very relevant today. For continued updated information about frauds centered around the coronavirus pandemic, you can call the AARP Fraud Watch Network helpline at 877 908 3360. Again, that number is 877-908-3360. Or you can visit aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork. If you can spot a scam, you can stop a scam. Well, joining me now, we have fraud expert and AARP Washington State Director, Doug Shadell. Doug, welcome. It's always good to have you on the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's start here by talking about um, the law enforcement. They've really been kind of trying to crack down on fraudulent behaviors lately. Tell us what's yeah. been going on so far and, and what, what action you've seen so far. Yeah, well, it's probably no, no surprise to your viewers, these numbers you were just giving us about robodials, because everybody's getting those calls and the federal government really is trying to crack down on them. You mentioned the cancer DNA screening test. And by the way, if any of your viewers, I'd like to just reinforce, we'd like to hear from them if they've gotten that kind of call. Because the robocall monitoring services just think that is just an epidemic. Um, a couple of the actions that were taken, uh, just two weeks ago, the DOJ arrested 35 people who were running these boiler rooms that were, basically it's defrauding Medicare, but it's calling you up and saying, you could take this test for free as a condition of your assurance is free um, to see whether you have the DNA that makes it more likely for you to get cancer, right? And they will, you know, send you a swab kit. We'll go into this more in the future. Those are all frauds. They're defrauding Medicare. They'll send you a kit. You send it back. We're not sure where it goes. And then they'll bill Medicare $10,000 for that one transaction. These tests do exist, but that's not the way they are, operate. So that's one. And that was a $2.1 billion case that they just brought, the federal government. Wow. Another one just last week was um, an international fraud ring. It involved money laundering, and it was an ATM uh, skimming operation. This is where they put that one of those fake skimmers on an ATM, um, and then you put your card in, it reads your card, and then they use your card number. And they're standing 10 feet away and the radio signal, it's, it's quite an amazing and quite sophisticated thing. And law enforcement says, you know, we're just playing whack-a-mole. They're doing a great job, but we, this is one of the reasons why we do shows like this and AARP so spends so many resources warning people because we also have to get the word out. That's another piece of this, how to solve this problem. I want to talk a little bit about health fraud scams. Let's face it, anytime you were, use the word cancer or your health, that's a buzzword. That really gets people upset and very, very concerned. Uh, so as we get deeper into that, uh, maybe we can have some of our callers call in and maybe share their stories yeah. about how all of this fraud takes place or what they've heard. That's a great idea. I'm sure they've gotten these calls. I've gotten them myself, and maybe we can talk about that later. The, um, the, the kind of DNA, so here's, here's what happens. The call comes in and they say, you know, you could, you could, uh, you might have the gene for cancer, you know, and that's a scary thing. And more and more of these calls are using fear, 
Because what gets people to respond better than the fear of, like you say, cancer, or fear of Social Security coming after you, or fear of the IRS? All, all of these, and you know, these numbers you were showing, some estimate that 50% of all those billions of robocalls are just out-and-out -out fraud schemes. And this is one of them, the DNA cancer screening thing. And I think, I don't know, we, should we listen to one? I yes, think there's yes, a, please, oh, let's okay. do that. Um, regarding your eligibility for a new cancer screening test that would help you detect certain cancers that you may be predisposed to. This is your final notice for the state-of-the-art test, which is a benefit of your insurance. Press 1 to speak to me or one of our testing specialists, or press 9 to be placed on our Do Not Call list. Now, Doug, one of the things I noticed in there, they, they use, and I've had these phone calls too, the things that they say, this is your final notice, or, yeah. or you may be pre, you're predisposed, what, whatever these, these buzzwords are to really gin you up, and, and it actually uh, you know, sometimes makes your, your, you, know, you get nervous, you get sweaty palms, oh my gosh, that could be me, or that is me, or this Absolutely. is my last chance. Fear, urgency, this is your last chance, those are all tactics that most of these scams have. I got one of these calls, and let me just explain to the viewers. What, first of all, if the viewers got that call, please tell us. We'd like to hear from you, but I got one myself at home, and I played along with it. Well, what do you mean this is a cancer screening? You mean it's free? Yes, it's free. Medicare pays for it 100%. is no cost to you, provided you meet the right conditions. And the conditions are you have to tell me at least two relatives in your past that may have had cancer. Do you have two relatives? And they have to be blood relatives. Well, my uncle died of lung cancer. Okay, that's one. Uh, my grandmother, I think, died of breast cancer. And I'm actually playing along and pretending this. Mm -hmm. Great, you, you qualify. And I'm like, really? I don't have to have my doctor do this? No, you don't have to have your doctor do it. Just, um, But you do have to give me your Medicare number, the red, white, and black, blue card. I need that number. I need all the information off of that. Right, and I need information about the name of your doctor. What they do with that then, this is clearly a boiler room, because I asked them, where are you calling from? Florida. Where in Florida? I can't say. Well, you were asking me all this personal information. Why aren't you telling me what, you know? Right. Then they hung up on me. You asked too many questions, so it's clearly a scam. What, you, what they'll do is send you a, a little box that's got a swab, just like a Q-tip swab, instructions to swab your cheek, send it back to a lab, and then we don't know what happens after that. In some cases, the lab actually does diagnose it, but they bill Medicare $10,000 for that one thing. So it's a way for, and this $2 billion scam they just took down, it doesn't take long to get to $2 billion if you're charging $10,000 per example of that. So the message is, do not, if you think you might need one of these tests, the test is legitimate. There is a, a, a legitimate cancer screening test. Ask your doctor about it. That's, Medicare will not pay for it just because you say to somebody on a telemarketing call that I have two relatives who died of cancer or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's completely ridiculous. But people don't think about that. All they're thinking, as you point out, is the fear that, oh, I might have that gene. And, oh, it's free. Why not do it? Why not do it is that it bilks Medicare and it rises, raises the cost for all of us. That is amazing. Do you have any other examples of, of these calls? I think we do have one more that we could run. Yeah. Okay. okay. Why don't we run that? Sure. Uh, the marine phytoplankton they found is the purest food source on the planet. Uh, gram for gram, marine phytoplankton has 187 times the vitamin B1 of tuna. 650 times more magnesium than spinach, 750 times more calcium than milk. And I'm sure you know that, uh, well, they put all kinds of things in the food we eat nowadays. That is amazing. That is yeah. just so, I mean, some of us sit here and, and we see that we hear that. And we say, well, that's just so far-fetched. But there are some people that would actually buy into that, right? There are. And this was a case brought by one of the state AGs. So this is a real case that really happened. Um, the rest of that tape, he says, this will cure 500 different diseases. In fact, my wife was cured of it. I'm not supposed to say that on the air, but I just did. Um, and it's just, it's just fraud. It's medical quackery. And what it preys on are the most vulnerable among us who may have already tried a lot of things. And this is, why not try it, right? Maybe he's right. Maybe there's just, you know, maybe there's some conspiracy to keep that particular product off the market. I don't know. It's hard to know what's true these days. Um, and so people do fall for it. Unfortunately, it often results in you stopping taking other medications that are prescribed by a real doctor 
that really are helping you. And that's the real danger of going for these miracle cures. Which makes this even more dangerous. Exactly. Robert from Louisiana is here with us, and he's our first caller this evening. Good evening, Robert. Uh, thank you very much. By the way, you're a winner of a Yeti cooler. What's your comment or question? Oh, cool. Uh, a comment is that um, my robocalls, uh, usually most of them have to do with uh, student loans. Uh, now, I've never had a student loan. I'm 68 years old, and uh, they, I don't know how they get your phone number, but uh, when I hang up, and uh, I usually don't let them finish, but uh, I hang up, and I'll try to call them back, and uh, when you call them back, you can never get through. It's a, a number that's, that's not in use, or, uh, and I often wonder, well, how can that be if they're calling you from that number? How come you can't call it back? That's a good question. That is a great question. Student loan scams are pretty prevalent. On the question of why you can't call the number back, I'm glad he, he raises this because um, we have been going around the country, the Fraud Watch Network, teaching people that caller ID does not really tell you anymore who's calling because it is so simple to spoof the number. Um, you know, somebody's calling and, and the, that thing will come up and it'll look like someone locally in your town. Exactly. Right? But it's not. It's not. It's a spoofed number. We do a demonstration in our workshops where we download a software that I downloaded for $5 on my phone. And for $5, I can call you and I can pretend that I'm calling. For, it, it says, who are you calling? So I enter your number. Then it says, put the number in that you want it to look like you're calling from. It's that simple. And I put in a number that matches your area code and your prefix, and you think it's your neighbor, and so you pick it up. That's called neighbor spoofing. And so the reason you can't call it back is the number really doesn't even exist. The technology is so sophisticated that they can spoof the number, and they won't use the same number to even hour to hour. So it makes it really hard to know who's calling. That's a shame. Well, yeah. uh, hold on to some of these thoughts. We want to invite you to be sure and give us a call. And yeah, it will ring and you will get in through to us. It's 877-283-7570. We want to hear your stories and some of the things that you've faced through all of this as well. Stay tuned. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more Yeti coolers to give away. We want you to join the conversation. Once again, give us a call, 877-283-7570. And later in the show, we'll debut the new Oak Ridge Boys Fraud PSA. So don't go anywhere. More Rural America Live with the AARP when we come back. Want to take the family on a cruise? Here are five ways to steer clear of scam infested waters of a cruise scam. Number one, make sure and check the source of any free or low cost cruise offer and search online to authenticate the company's address and phone number. Number two, confirm any booking you make through a travel agent with the cruise line itself. Number three, pay with a credit card. That offers the greatest protection if a payment dispute arises. Number four, don't share or follow links from social media posts that promise a cruise ticket for taking a survey. And number five, don't click on any attachments in unsolicited cruise or travel emails. They could unleash malware that scours your computer for personal and financial data. For more tips on how to avoid scams, go to aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork and make sure to tune in to RFD TV the third Thursday of each month for Rural America Live with AARP. Welcome back to Rural America Live with AARP. I'm John Jenkinson. DNA test scams, fake cancer drug robocalls, scams, frauds, you. And that's our topic tonight. We want you to join our conversation and give us a call. Do you have a phone scam story to share? Or how about a tip to stop fraudsters in their tracks? The phone number is 877-283-7570. Right now, the phone lines are open. We want to hear from you. I'm here with fraud expert Doug Shadell, and uh, also joining us is Regional Director for AARP, Sarah Jennings, and AARP State Director for Vermont 
Greg Marshallin, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, first of all, uh, let's start here. Uh, I want to know just how much of the states get most robocalls? Because we were talking about this before we went on the air tonight, that there is a statistic that tracks this. There is, and the truth is everybody gets robocalls, right? Mm -hmm. I bet every single person listening or watching us right now gets a call once a week, once a day even. Um, but there is a service, we have a robocall index actually, that tracks us daily and upped and has kind of up to the, up to the minute data on this stuff. And so we do have uh, kind of the winning states, I guess we could call them. Um, <laughs> but Alabama actually is number four in the most. They get a billion, followed by Florida, 1.5 billion calls. And that is just through September of this year. Illinois comes in third with 3.3 billion. And our big winner is Texas with 5 billion robocalls being made into the state of Texas just this year alone. That's amazing. And it's amazing. And that that again is just through September of 2019. So there's a, we all need to be ready. Calls are happening in every single state on that map. And so we all need to be ready um, with the tools to make sure that you can know what a robocall is and know what to do to make sure you don't get scammed. And Vermont is not. Well, I mean, we'll get You're four. You're not a billion. No, we're not a billion, but we get four get million of these things. And there's less than 700,000 people that live in our state. So right. that'll give you a sense of the size and scope of it. So. In Vermont, we decided to take matters into our own hands and we created an event which we call a reverse boiler room. So this basically is just taking the tools um, that the criminals and the scammers use and turning around and using it on, on folks to provide prevention messages for. So we set up an event where we worked with our governor and our attorney general and AARP volunteers where we actually called members uh, of AARP and other members of the Vermont community, gave them a prevention message, warned them about frauds and scams. Um, and again, using the telephone, which is a tool that the criminals use to rip these people off to the tune of you know millions and billions of dollars each year. So, and I do think we have some video on this, which we can okay. show. Okay, let's take a look at. Okay. It. Mm -hmm. Hey, John, this is Governor Phil Scott. How are you? Well, it's unfortunate we have to be here at all in some respects uh, because what we're seeing throughout our, our country, throughout our state, are these uh, are these plots uh, to take advantage of our most vulnerable. And uh, that is with these scamming calls. And, and they're running rampant, again, throughout our country, throughout our state. And we're here to try and prevent that from happening. We're concerned about some of our older members and those who may live in smaller rural communities in more isolated ways, may live by themselves, uh, and may not talk to somebody for a couple days, three, four days in a row. So if we can reach those people directly and give them the information they need, talk them through it, provide resources, uh, and information for them, it will make a big difference in their lives. I'm an AARP Fraud Watch Network volunteer. I think the people really appreciated the calls, and I had to say that at first, I think they, they felt that it was going to be a scam uh, or some sort of solicitation because, unfortunately, that is the new normal. And so this is such a creative way, uh, an innovative way that AARP is doing this reverse boiler room that people were really grateful. They were thankful for the information. And here's the bottom line. We're going to trust Vermonters to make decisions for themselves, but we need to give them the information, and that's why this event is so critical. Folks are taking the phone calls that we're making, you know, incorporating their family and saying, yes, we all need to be educated. What you did was great. You hung up on them. That's exactly what you should do. We want everybody to understand what a scam looks like, and it's programs like this, and it's getting media coverage, and it's getting the governor and the attorney general all involved, and, and just getting the word out, because prevention is key. In the end, if you can spot a scam, you can stop a scam. And I think that's the key, is knowing how to stop. I don't know how many times I've talked to people about these, these robocalls, and they say, okay, well, how do I stop it? Do I wait around and wait for them to... Uh, to take me off the do not call list and how well does the do not call list work. So these are great examples of, yeah. of how you get it to the point where you get them to stop. Absolutely. And I'm interested, who is making all those calls? ARP volunteers. Is that right? That is absolutely wow. right. We're really proud of them. They spent about five hours in a call center. We made over 1,000 live calls that day to folks that we had identified who are particularly vulnerable to fraud. Older people living in isolation probably by themselves in really rural communities. We may have been the only folks to be talking to them for you know two or three days in a row, so reaching these people was critical. We couldn't call all of our 140,000 members <laughs> in a five-hour period, so the governor was gracious. Governor Scott recorded a robocall for us, so there's maybe a little bit of irony there, but that was a prevention <laughs> message that he sent out so that we could reach everybody that day. The goal of the day essentially was sort of a great big sort of communications bomb. We used the telephone, we used social media, 
um, email, a whole bunch of ways to reach people in sort of one, one quick way to get this prevention message out. Getting the word out. I think you said yep. it best right there. Greg. And one of the ways to do that is communicate openly. And that's what we want you to do with us right now. 877-283-7570 is the phone number. We would love to hear from you like Lisa in Tennessee. Good evening, Lisa. Thank you very much for giving us a call. What's your question or your comment? Well, my comment is that I received a call recently um, from supposedly the IRS, oh, yeah. and <laughs> they wanted to, uh, they told me that I was going to go to jail if I didn't pay a, a fine that was uh, late, and they wanted some information, and of course I didn't give it to them. I started asking them questions, and um, they didn't really know how to answer the questions that I was asking them. But they told me that I was going to go to jail, that a police officer would be to my house within the hour if I didn't pay this fine over the phone. <laughs> and the the crazy thing about it was they knew the four, last four digits of my social. Yeah. How did they get that? <laughs> how does that happen? Well, Doug could probably talk about how that happens. But I was just going to say, I'm glad Lisa mentioned that one because that scam happens all year round at this point, but it starts to really happen between now and tax time. So it's good to mention that, and the IRS is never going to call you and make those kinds of requests over the phone. So if you get a call from the IRS, don't give them information. But talk about how we get those Social Security numbers out there. Doug? Yeah. Well, just to reinforce what you said, um, Sarah, and what we were talking about earlier about fear. Mm -hmm. yes. People are afraid of the IRS. And of all ages, I'm afraid of the IRS. <laughs> right. And so if somebody calls and says the IRS is going to come and get you, that gets you into this emotional state we've talked about for years, which you know stops the logical reasoning part of your thinking, and you may actually act on it. In terms of how people get Social Security numbers, we interviewed a guy um, uh, earlier this year uh, named Brett Johnson, who was the internet godfather of the dark web. You can buy people's social security numbers on, on the dark web. But he showed us, he took us onto the dark web and showed us a website where you could buy anybody's social security number for $3. And I didn't believe him. So I said, look up my wife's name. He looks up my wife's name and there, there she is. So all of our information, and not to instill fear in the viewers, <laughs> um, because the reality is that we live in this age where all of our information is already out there. It just really is. And we have to be vigilant about monitoring our bank accounts, maybe freezing our credit, which we've talked about before on this program. Mm -hmm. You need to pay attention to what's going on with your accounts, including your Social Security number. You still shouldn't give it out. If people say, I won't do business with you without giving it to you, you shouldn't do business with them. You don't have to give them your Social Security number. So she should be protecting it. But a lot of that information is already floating around. Wow. Our telephone number, if you want to get in on the conversation, is 877-283-7570. Doug has used that number, and he's called in tonight. Good evening, Doug. What's your comment or question? David. David, are you there? Yes. Yes. This is David. Yes, sir, David. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Yeah, I have a comment. We've been getting a call from a gentleman that was uh, claiming to be from Microsoft, and he said our contract with Microsoft was going to be canceled if we didn't call a certain number within 24 hours. We would lose all of our information on the computer. So I told my wife I'm going to have some fun with him. So I called that number back, and he said Microsoft Maryland. It was a Maryland uh, area. Uh, uh, per, uh, number and I said this is the Berlin police and we see on our caller ID that you had called and in a real loud voice I said hey put that guy in the last jail cell on the right <laughs> and I, I said sorry for that incon uh, inconvenience and I said hello hello and I got a a dial tone, he done hung up on me, and that stopped the calls. So I, well scammed, done. I scammed a scammer. Yeah, you spooked the spoofer. Yeah. Yeah, we're sort of two for two tonight with uh, folks that are doing the yeah. right thing. We're also playing the hits. The, the Microsoft scam is, you know, next to the IRS scam, one of the most prevalent scams in the country. Somebody calls, tells you there's an internet outage or there's something wrong with your computer. It's not Microsoft? Uh, it's definitely not Microsoft, or at least we're pretty sure it's not Microsoft. It's they say go to your computer and click on this top icon, and then there's that ISP number, right? It's a big, long number. They say give me that number. You give it to them. You've essentially provided the keys to your house, your automobile to this criminal, and then they can get inside your computer and take all your personal information, your banking information, credit card information, personal documents, health information. 
Uh, so this person played a nice little game. We recommend uh, just getting off, not answering the phone. Just uh, don't do that at all is generally a good idea. Um, this guy had some good fun, which is uh, sometimes a good thing to do, but we just recommend not engaging with these folks at all. Sure. Very I good. bet his number is off the list now. I bet probably. <laughs> uh, probably oh, so. you got that done, David. Probably so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's our number tonight, 877-283-7570. We'd like you to share with us tonight. Janine from Colorado is on the line with us. Good evening, Janine. What's your question or comment? Hello. Um, I've been getting phone calls um, from a young man that will start the conversation as, hello, Grandma. And uh, the first two times this happened, I said, you know, you're not my grandson, and please don't call back and hung up. But the second time, I held on a little bit and kind of talked him through. But when I called the telephone number back, both of them went to correctional institutions, one in New Jersey, and I can't remember the other state. Um, My concern here is um, are they able to call from these institutions and continue doing this kind of action? Great question. Doug? Doug. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny you should mention that, and, and good for you for figuring that out. We, um, there is going to be a story in the, in the AARP magazine in a couple months about an operation in the state of Georgia where prisoners were smuggling cell phones into the prisons and calling out pretending to be your local sheriff saying that you'd miss jury duty or various types of scams like that, pretending to be your grandson or your granddaughter. Um, they cracked down on that and threw a lot of those guys in jail. But it's the technology. If you have a cell phone, then you have a computer, and the cell phone is this big. Mm-hmm. So you imagine these inmates, um, they can do research, they can Google you know, the name of the sheriffs, not just the sheriff's department in your town, but who works there. In this case, they were also downloading software that allowed them to play a radio uh, police dispatcher in the background. So it convinced wow. the people that they were actually calling from a police station. Right. And it's all the technology is there. So it's just you'd never know who's calling. And she, she was wise to them, but um, a lot of people aren't. And again, it's fear. It's, it's right. like there's something yeah. wrong with grandson or grand. I interviewed a victim of this a couple of years ago, and they said, I didn't, if it's my grandchildren, I don't ask any questions. I go fix it, I go save them, and I ask questions later. It gets you that automatic emotional response, and that's what they're going mm-hmm. for. Janine, thank you very much for the call. You are a winner of a Yeti cooler, and Ooh. we still have some more of those to give away tonight. Okay. So give us a call, 877-283-7570. Let's go to Ohio. Uh, Dennis, good evening. Welcome to the program. What's your comment or question? I had I had two things. I had... Uh, um, uh, Apple. I got a call about Apple computer. I, it was something uh, uh, wrong with my computer, and, and so I hung up the first time. And a day later, I got it again, and I, I was able to talk to the guy from uh, India, and uh, I told him I don't even have a computer. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help. Yeah. What, did he, what did he say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is helpful. The thing is, uh, I buy stuff, uh, some uh, medical stuff over, uh, you know, uh, through the mail order catalogs, uh, special vitamins and stuff. And they have my uh, credit card on um, on uh, file, so I told them take it off. I don't want it uh, registered. Mm-hmm. Is there a problem with that? Because I'm afraid of something like that being compromised. That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I'm sure my, I think that generally not, you don't want to save your credit card into a lot of these sites because they can get hacked. That said, using a credit card is the safest way to do those online purchases because you are protected um, by the banking rules that you would get. So you're you're generally, you want to make, if you're going to make online purchases, the safest way to do it is to use that credit card. But I think it's wise. I personally don't save credit cards into any of those sites, just knowing that they could get hacked. But I don't know if we have well, different different uh, no, I think that's advice. Right. And we're hearing a theme here tonight. These are all imposter scams, right? Each right. and every one is someone pretending to be someone else. As Doug said, a lot of these are fear-based. Get yourself very worked up, so you're going to potentially make a bad decision that you wouldn't make if you weren't worked up or agitated. But these are all imposter scams. We've got the Microsoft scam, we've got the grandparents scam, um, and these are all people pretending to be someone else in an effort to take your money. And if you're not vigilant, um, you can really get caught up in this. So again, it's something that people have to be really, really mindful of.
Do you have a comment? Maybe you've gotten one of these phone calls. Maybe you have uh, experienced uh, a loss because of one of these phone calls. Or maybe you just have more questions on how to prevent them or maybe even find some some software to stop them. Well, you can also be registered and uh, be a winner for a cooler, a Yeti cooler. All you have to do is dial this number, 877-283-7570. Give us a call right now, like Rachel from Texas has. Good evening, Rachel. Uh, what's your question or comment? Hi. Um, I'm 76, and I should have known better. <laughs> uh, I got a, not a robocall, but it was a scam, Okay. Mm-hmm. On my TV, I've got caller ID. Uh, it came up as CenturyLink, which is my telephone company, calling me. And I thought, well, that's weird. What do they want? So, And the, the telephone number was under uh, 903-852, and they invented, you know, apparently the last four numbers. Mm-hmm. So I answered it. And this guy comes on the phone, and his name is Kenneth Joseph. Gave me his number, his 800 number, and another guy's name by the name of David Gordon, which was another number, another ID. So he says, what they are going to do for me is give me a new Chase um, credit card. Hmm. I only had two, and they're very small amounts that I, I charge. So he says, um, all it's going to cost you for this new Chase card, which is at 0% hmm. for the lifetime of the card, he says, is $900. I says, oh. He says, do you want that? Well, let's see what that's all about. So he says, okay. He says, we'll do that. So he put the thing through, took it out of one of my other credit cards. Hmm. Apparently, and so I hung up after talking to him, and I immediately called the Better Business Bureau. That was a good move. Yes. So I called their lady by the name of Pat Answers. She says, Chase doesn't have 0% interest cards. She said, call your credit card numbers right away and have them cancel your cards and get new ones. I said, okay. <laughs> so I did that. And she said, make it a dispute that you're not you know, going to pay that 900 I said, okay. So she said, let me know what happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, um, it was not paid, obviously. They didn't pay it. And I kept my $900. And I did call Chase to see if they opened up a, a card for me. And they said, yes, yeah, somebody called and opened up a card for you. I said, well, cancel it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, uh, the guy calls. Well, I was going to say, I appreciate Rachel calling because the truth is, I mean, it's so easy to fall or go along with one of these scams because they do sound so legitimate and they're getting so sophisticated with the ass that they make on the phone. So I'm glad Rachel called to share her experience and she did exactly the right thing. And it does show how there are tools out there that even if you do go along with the scam for a little bit, there's a chance that you can stop it so you don't actually lose the money. It's hard, though, and you really do have to move as quickly as she did to um, take care of it. But I'm glad that she called and that is another... That is another scam. And I think the other lesson with Rachel's story is that if it sounds too good to be true, it almost always is. So a 0% credit card, who wouldn't love that? Um, And so, again, I think you got she talking about the idea of getting sort of excited about something like that would sound like a really good deal. And so, again, you're not in the you're not in the mindset to make a great decision. But I'm glad that it worked out for Rachel. Doug referenced this early. This is a person that if they had a credit freeze on their account, the credit card wouldn't have been able to be opened up at all. So we do Mm -hmm. recommend calling the credit bureaus and putting, uh, getting a credit freeze in your account, unless you're, of course, about to buy a home or a car uh, or something like that where you'd need to have um, a credit check done, a credit freeze will prevent all of this from happening, and it's really the only safe way to make sure that your credit's protected. Well, let's go to the telephone, 877-283-7570. Nathan, congratulations. You are the winner of a Yeti cooler. That's, Yay! that's pretty awesome. Yay! Nathan lives in Indiana. Good evening, Nathan. What's your comment or question? Nathan, are you Hello? there? Yes. Yes. Hello. Congratulations. Uh, what's your question or comment? Oh, I had a guy call me the other day. It was about Publix Clearing House, and he sounded like a scammer. 
and he wanted all my information. And I went back to give him all the information of mine. So that's yeah. what happened to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Publishers Clearinghouse um, is a legitimate sweepstakes business. People have all seen their TV ads, but we have noticed as we see, we get some monitoring of these robo dials that come in, a huge flurry of these fake Publishers Clearinghouse where you've won, but you gotta um, pay the taxes. I interviewed a woman about six months ago in Seattle who lost $850,000 to oh. this. It started with you've won the Publishers Clearinghouse, but you need to pay $4,000 in taxes. By the end, she was withdrawing $50,000 at a time, wrapping it in magazines and shipping it to money mules all over the United States. Because part of the sneaky thing about this is once you fall for a little bit of money, then you feel like you can't get out of it because it's sunk, it's not sunk cost. It's like you got to recover the money you've already paid in. And that was sort of the psychological trap she had set for herself. So. You know, if you think it might be true, with all of these, as, as Greg said, they're all imposter scams. Um, if you think you want to look into who they say they are, don't respond to them. Hang up, and you can independently call Publishers Clearinghouse. You can independently call Chase Bank. You can independently call, you know, Microsoft or any of these places and verify whether there's something wrong with your computer right. or whether you right. want or whatever. Don't respond to the robo-dialer, though. That's a good example. And by the way, while we're on that topic, do you have any other examples of a, of a call? Uh, maybe maybe something else we hadn't heard of or thought of so far? There is. I think it's another one in the category of health scams and Medicare fraud. Um, how many of you have gotten a call that said you're eligible to have Medicare pay for a free back brace or a neck brace? Anybody get that call? Call us and tell us about it, because this is another prevalent one, and I think we have a, an example of it. Okay. We can play. Let's take a look. Yeah. Hi, this is Nancy, your patient advocate working closely with Medicare. This is an urgent message for all patients on Medicare. We have tried numerous times to contact you by mail and now by telephone regarding your eligibility for top-of-the-line braces to alleviate your pain and increase mobility. This is your final notice. If you do not act soon, Medicare will label you unavailable for coverage. Press 1 now to speak with me or another pain specialist. Or press 9 to be put on the do not call list. Wow. Okay, so there you are. Sounds yeah. legit. It does sound legit. It does sound legit. Yeah. Durable medical equipment fraud is another thing term for it. But who, you know, think of the market for this. Who doesn't have pain? <laughs> I mean, anybody over you know a certain age, we all have pains of some kind. Medicare is going to pay to alleviate that. There's also a version of this that's a cream that they've just invented that you can put on, and Medicare does pay for some durable medical equipment, but. Not from these people, because they're going to send you this sort of crappy replica of a back brace, and then again, charge Medicare $8,000 for it. It's, it's Medicare fraud. And so, again, if you think you could use a back brace and Medicare might cover it, that's when you go to your doctor and you look into it that way. But don't respond to these callers. Nothing over the phone like that. Right. Ever. All right. right. All right. right. Uh, give us a call. We've still got Yeti coolers to give away. 877-283-7570. And here's the best part. You can share with us if you've had uh, one of these calls or, or maybe had some dealings with these people. We would love to hear from you and share that with other folks as well. And Sarah, we uh, earlier, you and I were talking along with the rest of the group about something very special. You're working with a very special organization, very special group. We are. That's kind of, uh, kind of behind all of this to help stop some of this fraud. That's right. We love to partner with different uh, celebrities or groups that we think can help send a message and help people pay attention to some of the scams and frauds and how they can protect themselves. And so we were excited that in Oklahoma, our ARP Oklahoma office and Sean Voskel, who is on this program a lot, and you'll see him there on the screen, got to announce a new partnership with the Oak Ridge Boys. Um, and the Oak Ridge Boys are excited to partner with us to talk about frauds and scams because this is something that has touched their lives. And so you're going to see this video. Um, and there was the, we had the Department of Justice at this. We had the Attorney General um, from the state of Oklahoma. And of course, there's Sean. And they just talked about how the Oak Ridge Boys are going to work with us and have a PSA to um, share some messages about tools people can use to fight fraud. And I think we're also going to see the PSA. Okay. So the public service announcement. That PSA, who knows what that stands for? The public service announcement. Let's take a look. If we can have any influence at all 
with what we do and, and with our image or anything else like we've put on that commercial and we will continue to do so. If we can help this in any way to bring awareness and to make people be more vigilant about everything before they click here. I think then we will have accomplished what we're all trying to accomplish here today. And we thank you for letting us be a part. Hi, we're the Oak Ridge Boys. Scammers steal billions of dollars from unsuspecting people every year. We are working with AARP's Fraud Watch Network and the Department of Justice to keep you from being a victim of fraud. They have vital information for you. They will help you get in touch with folks that fight fraud every day. Go to aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork. That is absolutely Isn't that fantastic, that is fantastic, right? It's, sometimes it it's all about the messenger, right? And so to have the Oak Ridge Boys partnering with us is really exciting. It um, is. Yeah, and we're going to hear a little bit more. I think one thing that is always interesting with a group like the Oak Ridge Boys is they have been playing awesome music for so long, and so we're going to hear a little bit later. Sean asked them, like, what keeps them going? And they they, they let us in on their secret. So it's you got to stay tuned. It's front fight. <laughs> it is, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Partnerships <laughs> like with us, yeah. All right. Well, I tell you what, we still have a long way to go here, so be sure and give us a call. We'd love to hear from you and share your stories with us. 877-283-7570. We have to take a short break, but we will have Yeti Cooler yet to give away, and the phone lines are open. So give us a call, 877-283-7570, and join the conversation. Hi. We're the Oak Ridge Boys, and you're watching AARP Live. Yeah. <laughs> that is so neat. That is so neat. Welcome back to Rural America Live with AARP. We have another Yeti cooler to give away, so we're going to go straight to the phone lines. That telephone number, 877-283-7570. Elizabeth from Kentucky, good evening. Welcome. It's good to have you here this evening. What's your uh, comment or question? Are you there, Elizabeth? Well, we'll see if we can get back to Elizabeth yeah. here in just a moment. But uh, be sure and uh, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Let's go to William in Ohio. William, are you there? Well, we'll try William again here in just a moment as well. The telephone number is 877 -283 -7570. We really would like to hear from you. We still have one of those Yeti coolers to give away. Nice. You know, one, let's go to Joyce from Illinois. Good evening, Joyce. <laughs> and uh, you're, you're with us here on AARP Live. What's your question or comment? Well, we're up to the United States. Okay. Um, one of the things we talked a lot about here tonight was how it, it just kind of works on our fear and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, how is it that some of these calls and, and some of these, these perpetrators, if I can use that term, mm -hmm. get so much information and, and it makes it sound so real. They, use, they just toss around everybody's names and uh, names of companies, names of big companies that we all recognize mm -hmm. to lend credibility to it. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's part of it. And I think the other thing is that they get you feeling pretty comfortable talking to them. So we, we often will give them information about us. Or they, the other thing that people talk about is phishing. You know, they'll sort of ask you questions that you start to mm -hmm. answer, and then that gives them some more information that they're going to use against you. So, again, best thing, just don't pick up the phone. Yep, that's good advice. All right, let's go back to the telephones. Joyce from Illinois, are you there? Try again. Yes. Joyce, thank you very much. What's your comment or question she tonight? Cool <laughs> well, this morning I got a call from Social Security, supposedly, and they said my Social Security has been suspended. So I said, no, it hasn't. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. And I said, Social Security doesn't call people. They send mm -hmm. things in the mail. And he kind of hesitated, and I said, please don't call me again. And I immediately hung up. So my question is, does Social Security call people? No. Um, I thought that they didn't. <laughs> no, you're, you're right. right. Yeah, you're absolutely you're right. right, Joyce, and you did the right thing. You got um, an A. You got an A for this, right? <laughs> if the Social Security Administration wants to talk to you, they'll send you usually a piece of certified mail. Then there will be a phone number for you to call to find out what it is that they're contacting you about. But not only will the Social Security Administration never contact you by the phone that way, Microsoft isn't going to do that. Apple isn't going to do that. Amazon isn't going to do that. That's just not how business gets done. 
Um, so uh, again, we have people uh, doing a lot of the right things, which makes us feel good because we've been talking about fraud in this program now for a number of years. Yeah. And we're just hearing a lot of callers do a lot of the right things. And if we're getting that message out and ARP Live's helping with that, this is a good thing. We've got another Yeti cooler to give away, 877-283-7570. Charles from Alaska is joining us this evening. Good evening, Charles. What's your question or comment? The uh, comment I had is just uh, people wanting to give away money, and 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 I, I tell them, uh, I don't want your money. Mm -hmm. I can't use your money. And they go on and want to just try their best to get information from me and I won't give them no information and the information I give them is I am totally disabled. I cannot travel. I cannot go nowhere. So your money wouldn't do me no good if I had it. Okay. So I don't want no money. Well, Charles is, they can't of, believe that. They right. cannot. Well, one of the things that's happening here is that they they want his personal information, and the more information that they can get from an individual, which is something that Doug always refers to as profiling, the more valuable this person comes. One of the things that happens is these criminals will sell people's information to another criminal and to another criminal, and the more they know about a person, whether you're married, what your job is, how many siblings you have, what kind of automobile you own, they can start to make a real connection with these people. And the bigger the connection, the stronger the connection, that puts these people in a much more vulnerable position to become a victim of a scam or a fraud. And so sometimes they'll tell you that they're after your money, and they may be, but they're always after your personal information so that they can get more information on you directly. Let's go to Iowa. Jan from Iowa is uh, calling in tonight. Jan, what's your question or comment? Well, I keep getting calls that my car warranty is expiring. Oh. Yeah, I get, and, that I get that one too. You know, we have to hurry up and, you know, I have to hurry up and, and give them some information so that they can get it back in, you know, so that it works again. And, and I said, well, I think you're out of luck because I've got over 100,000 miles yeah, right. on my car. And <laughs> right. I, there's no way that you, and five minutes later, I got another one, just like that, somebody else calling. And I said, well, you're out of luck, too, because there's no way that uh, $100,000, 100,000 miles will still be under warranty. So I, I hung up on them. <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm, just quickly, I'm reminded of one thing that Doug's talked about over time, too. One of the reasons why we tell people not to pick up the phone. When you pick up the phone, they know you're picking up the phone. So you're going to get a check mark by your name as someone that actually picks the phone up, Right. And if you pick up the phone, you are more vulnerable to becoming a victim of a scam or a fraud, which is, again, one of the reasons why we tell people not to pick up the phone. So if your caller ID pops up and you just see a number and you don't know it or it doesn't say a friend's name or your doctor's name or a colleague's name, if it is someone who knows you, they'll leave a message and you can call them back. But when you pick up the phone, that gets noted. And again, that puts you in a pile or a group of names of individuals who criminals are going to be more likely to call. Well, uh, be sure and pick up the telephone and dial this number, 877-283-7570. There's no scams here, but we would like to hear from you and uh, maybe share uh, with us and with our audience uh, some of the things that you've experienced. Brenda is calling in from Tennessee, and she has won Excellent. a Yeti cooler, so congratulations. Yay. Brenda, thank you very much for the call. What's your comment or question? Well, I have an answering machine, and I do not... I get anywhere from 20 to 25 robocalls a week, and I don't answer an unrecognizable number. I have all of my family numbers memorized. Mm -hmm. So the message on my answer machine is, I do not answer telemarketer calls. I report these numbers to the Attorney General of the United States. Mm -hmm. Friends, family, leave a message. I'll get back to you immediately. Usually when they hear the Attorney General of the United States, they hang up. So I don't answer robocalls at that's, all. That's great. That yeah. is something. Yeah. No, great that's idea. A, yeah, that's a great like idea. That. Yep. Let the machine do the screening for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, well, congratulations, Brenda. That's uh, that's that's pretty uh, pretty clever, really. Uh -huh. And uh, congratulations on the Yeti cooler, Sarah. Earlier in the show, you had, uh, had talked a little bit about AARP in Oklahoma and how their yes. and Oak Ridge boys are working y with AARP. Yep. Can you expand on that a little bit? Well, more? again, we're partnering with the Oak Ridge boys. They're going to do some public service announcements and then some events with us, and I think even at their concerts, um, they're going to be sharing some of our good anti-fraud information. So that's exciting. But I mentioned that Sean asked them what keeps them going, and so. So we have a little bit of a fun video clip where they talked about why they keep making music and having the fun they're having, um, which is great, you know, great to see at all ages. So let's take a look. Okay. We enjoy singing. We enjoy being the Oak Ridge Boys. Uh, I've heard Dwayne Allen say many times, and I'll quote him, we've been able to play in every aspect of our career except how to quit. We don't know how to stop. We just don't. I think we're afraid if we even slow down sometimes that we'll slow down more. So we don't even slow down. We love being the Oak Ridge Boys. We love singing. We love making that sound that is us. I think one of the reasons for our longevity is the fact that I think we've done a pretty good job all these years trying to sing and, and do good things. And God's been good to us and he's given us the health to do that, which we're very thankful for. But also we have people out there that love our group. And we're like a middle America group here, man. And people have passed us down through generations. And uh, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And the great? passion, yeah. you know, it just comes through. And the fact that they're willing to give some of their time to help a yes, cause like really the Fraud Watch nice. Network is really awesome. For a great cause. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we only have a few minutes left. Do you folks have any final thoughts that you want to share with us? And Greg, we'll start with you. Well, we certainly want to make all of your viewers aware about the AARP Fraud Watch Network helpline. That number yes. is 877 908-3360. These are AARP trained volunteers who are answering phones. If you or someone you know, a loved one, a friend or a family member, you think you've been scammed or you think maybe you've been scammed, call this number. These volunteers can really help you, point you in the right direction about how to get some help. All right. That's great. Yeah. And I want to encourage people. We've talked about a website, um, but there's lots of great information on there about some of the scams and tr tools that we've talked about tonight. But that website is aarp.org slash Fraudwatch Network. And you can see it there on the screen. But um, I'd encourage people when you have a little downtime at some point, check that out. There's lots of great resources. And you can also sign up to receive um, some of our scam tips in, the, in your email. So I'd encourage you to give it a shot. So thank you for all the callers tonight, though. This has been a great show. Sure. Doug? Um, my, one final thought, we've been talking about robo-dials. There are these robo-dial blocking companies, and I really suggest that you look into that. I, I'm a real believer. They're, and we're agnostic about which one, but you saw some data from Umail. There's Nomo Robo. I'm familiar with Nomo Robo. We partnered with them earlier this year. What they basically do is, in the case of Nomo Robo, they bought 250,000 mothballed phone lines, and they ran them into a computer, and they monitor. The, it's called a honeypot. And all the robo-dialers that call into this honeypot, they flag, and then they build a blacklist. And when you sign up for it, if I call you before the phone rings, that number rings against the blacklist. And if there's a match, it blocks it. And if there isn't a match, it'll go through. And you eliminate 98% of the calls that amazing. way. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. And, amazing. I, the one, and again, we're agnostic. There are multiple companies out there who do this. But if you want to just stop getting the onslaught, that one woman said 25 calls on a week, that's really annoying, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And um, so that's one way to do it. Well, it was amazing the amount of calls when we were at the very beginning yeah. of the show. There was one other good question, and our floor, our floor director, uh, Daniel, asked this question earlier, and I'd like to pose it. Uh, yeah. What about when you hit block, when it gives you that opportunity? Does that really block that call? Well, the problem is that there, it blocks that call coming from the, the, the number that it's originating from, but they change hour to hour. Right, mm -hmm. and so you can block that one. It's going to come right back as a different number from the same person. From the same person, right. that's the problem. And the other thing, people are worried about these call blocking. Well, what if my friends can't get through? You can you can create a white list of your friends, and they will let all of those calls come through. So it's not going to block your mother, your daughter, your uncle, your neighbor. Um, it just blocks all the bad guys. Interesting. Well, there's, I'm sure there's a lot more information uh, online where yeah. we can we can learn more about this if somebody wants to. Yep, aarp.org slash Broadwatch Network. Okay, all right. Uh, 
Folks, we really appreciate you being on the show yeah. tonight. This is such an education, and this is such a, a big issue across mm -hmm. all of rural America for, for everyone. So thank you very much. Uh, that's about wraps it up for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Be sure and join us next month, November 21st, when we dedicate our show to veterans. I'm John Jenkinson, and thank you for joining us. And good night from Rural America's most important network.